Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We have just had a M2.7 solar flare on the sun. And this is notable because it was actually a much stronger microwave radio burst than it was a traditional X-ray flux solar flare. It launched two solar storms towards Earth. Check this out, we have that here uh, with our coronagraph view. And you'll notice two storms quickly launch out back to back Boom, nice, perfect halo. Check this out, boom shakalaka. There we go. And that is headed our way undoubtedly because of that perfect halo configuration. And so we see one and two, honestly it makes almost like a butterfly or a heart shape. Very, very interesting. But this is much more interesting than just that because this solar flare that occurred right here, that was immediately after we had a seismic burst in Nevada. This is the United States West Coast, you know, just to the east of California. And it happened in the Midas hydrothermal system. Midas being, of course, the, the legend king of anything he touched turned to gold. They call it Midas because there is a high concentration of gold and silver there, which are the two most conductive metals on the planet. You also have copper, you have like platinum, but they are very, very conductive due to the fact that they have a whole bunch of free electrons. And they can zoom around on the edge of these copper uh, nucleuses pretty easily. So we had this seismic burst, magnitude 4.8 being the strongest earthquake. Let's check out the map. And then within about a minute, we had this solar flare start to blast off. And that seismic burst in Nevada occurred when the sun was directly overhead. So you have the earth here, you have the sun. Nevada was exactly on the sun facing side, launching perhaps some sort of burst of energy towards the sun such that it triggered this solar activity. It looks like a very likely uh, scenario here. So here we have our USGS latest earthquakes map. So you can check out the progression. We're gonna go through the data so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, make up your own mind. But we do have a pretty significant double solar storm impact coming in in about 24 to 72 hours. We have a really um, quite stimulating NASA space weather model to check out, looking pretty significant. And I think we're gonna get a G3 storm from that. But here's this earthquake burst in Nevada. So let me pull out so you can see the United States. There's the United States, okay? Most activities usually around California. This is in this hydrothermal field here. And so there's a place called Hot Lake nearby. That tells you something, right? When I was checking this out, I'm like, there must be hydrothermal here. Then you have Midas right there. And the strongest earthquake there being a magnitude 4.8 right here. So that was at 1859 universal time. So basically in 1859-53. So let's call it 1900 universal time on the dot. California is UTC minus seven because the East Coast is UTC minus three, move over three more hours, UTC minus seven. That makes that, if it's 1900, that makes that exactly at noon, right? 12 p.m. right at noon, we had that magnitude 4.8. The sun was directly overhead, okay? And if you look at our oldest first, we see that there were some other earthquakes kind of before this in the you know 9 a.m. UTC, 12:54, but they were magnitude threes. But something was starting up even before that perfect alignment, and then we get this 4.8 right there at a depth of 8.1 uh, kilometers. And look at the time here. Then we get a whole bunch of aftershocks, okay, uh, leading up to this most recent magnitude four at. Uh, 5.27 a.m. universal time on the 31st of August. Okay, so again, 1900 UTC. We had that exactly aligned with the sun overhead. Here is our X-ray flux, which allows us to precisely see when this flare occurred. And we look there, that's 1850 universal time right there. Let's punch in on the one day and get this lined up. 1855 universal time. And then right here, 1900 universal time. Look at that flare immediately responding to that earthquake seismic burst in Nevada. We are still in the period of time where the Northern Hemisphere is tilted more towards the sun. So Nevada being mid-high mid latitude, tilted more towards the sun. 
and we see this rocket up and that's a very quick signal there. So from that 1900 to the peak of this flare, that was 50 minutes. And it started within five minutes after 1900. Look at how it ramped up at 1905. So it took, and the time it takes for light to travel from the earth to the sun is 8.3 minutes. So within 8.3 minutes, we had this flare get triggered. Clearly there was some sort of burst of photonic light energy or something extremely fast that if this hypothesis is to be correct, left the earth from that location. You know, again, gold and silver is highly conductive, maybe traveled through some pre-existing super rich and rich scene and then shot straight to the sun and we got this solar flare to launch out right from 4199. Look at that plasma burst, okay? So it was more than a flare. Look at how quickly the plasma wave went before the flare. So that, that plasma wave actually launched immediately after that earthquake. Maybe it was like even like some sort of like gravity wave. Like that travels at the speed of light. Gravity travels at the speed of light. So some very interesting things. We also had a solar radio burst right at that time. So let's look at our specific 10.7 uh, centimeter radio frequency data here. And this is, you know, basically just a text document. We'll look at a graph next, but to give you the precise time, here we have 2000 universal time. That flare peaked at 1950, okay? So this is right effectively taking a measurement at the peak of that solar flare, that 2.7 M flare, okay? Look at this, we are 219 solar flux units for our 2.8 gigahertz or 2800 megahertz or 10.7 centimeter wavelength light, which is one of our preferred measures of solar flux. It's our pr primary solar indice. And we see right there at 2000, it bumped to 317 and then back down to 230. So we caught that solar flare perfectly with our solar flux data. Here's the graph, so you can really see it. Look at where we were back in July. This all got basically squished flat in terms of its variation because of this ramp up here at the very end of August. We were hovering around 240, and then we spiked to about over, you know, I think it said 315. We spiked over 300 for that burst and came right back down, but we are right there at about 230 or so. Uh, so very, very high solar flux. These are radio frequency energies. So again, 2.8 gigahertz. Oh, that sounds familiar. It's like the 2.4 gigahertz of your Wi-Fi router, except it's 0.4 gigahertz higher. So it's in that, uh, that range of Wi-Fi and 5G and all those frequencies. The sun emits those as well. And you get water start to really absorb energy after one gigahertz. Let me pull that data up. But this is in my, my records here. It shouldn't take too long to get, but let me show you the, the electric susceptibility of water. Cause this is really pretty interesting. Uh, and it, it's very much a rabbit hole that I'm surprised more people don't really talk about because it has such a profound effect on our biology. Um, but you know, not everyone knows everything and there's a lot of distractions that people, uh, pay attention to that they really shouldn't. And so this is not one of those things. Here we have the electric susceptibility of water. And this is our frequency scale for the Y for the X axis going from 100 megahertz or 0.1 gigahertz to one gigahertz, 10, 50, hundred. Look at how things start to change after one gigahertz with the electric susceptibility. This is the ability for water to absorb this energy. Up here, it's not absorbing that much, especially if it's at zero degrees centigrade, which is ice, right? But then if you get the water hot, and for example, up to 75 degrees C, we are at 37 with our human body temperature. So it's like right in between these two lines right there, you could kind of track that up, okay? Well, you get to, three, let's this is two, this is three gigahertz, you're now really starting to absorb that frequency, right? And you get even higher with 5G and look at what that does. But this, this energy coming in is able to penetrate through the atmosphere of the sun. This is the solar radio burst that the earth sent or that the sun sent. It's able to penetrate through the atmosphere to a large degree, 
hit the crust and then heat it up. So what's so interesting about this is that we had this seismic burst here in Nevada seemingly trigger a significant solar flare and microwave radio burst on the sun, which then is charging up the earth and causing this absorption of microwave energy and therefore thermal expansion, because that's what a microwave does. It hits something, it does, there's a lot of different quantum effects and atomic effects to, to these sort of gigahertz energies, but they also just primarily generate heat. This is what we have coming in. Check this out. So here we have this double signature. Look at the small wave that to get launched first, just gobbled up by that stronger, more powerful solar storm. So that is coming in right around September 2nd at the beginning of the day, universal time. Uh, some people are forecasting that to come in a little bit earlier. So like September 1st at 2000 UTC, uh, but unknown how this will come in. I think it's going to come in on September 2nd. I don't think it's going to come in as fast as they, as they are, are forecasting, uh, but this is just a little bit of combination of intuition having been doing this forecasting for a while. So a bo big boom shakalaka from the sun, actually two of them. We have this coming in. Here's the Earth, there's Mars. We have Mercury coming in for a superior conjunction on September 13th. That's a Mercury Kazemi. Here we have Venus there. So no super significant planetary geometry that I'm seeing within the inner solar system, though we do get this Mercury-Venus semi-alignment right there. We also have kind of this Mars-Mercury-Venus line there, which is interesting. But this, I think, is very clearly some sort of zap from the Earth or that went through the Earth, which then also hit the sun at the same time. Um, so... Yeah, and actually, you know, let's let's look at an antipode map, okay? Because if this went through the Earth, then let's see what's on the opposite side of Nevada. Pretty close to this island there. See that island? French and Southern Antarctic lands. Okay, that's what we have. So yeah, a lot of powerful energies coming in at this moment in time. As we can see with our solar flux, a big radio burst, sunspot numbers, are over 200, getting close to 220. Again, these twos are popping up. Dogecoin's $22. We got a lot happening here in the twos. That is what is resonating. Big solar burst coming in, double solar storm actually. We already had that microwave burst hit us and we'll see if maybe something kind of wild happens in Nevada. This could be perhaps foreshock activity. So we'll have to wait and see about this. But certainly from this guy here, we had a very nice solar storm launch our way. Actually, two of them again, as you can see. So thank you all so much for watching, everyone. I've been your host, Stefan Burns. If you'd like to stay up to date with what is happening with the Earth, with the sun, the planets, the cosmos, then please subscribe to the channel. I release videos almost daily. As you can tell at this live stream, I saw the solar flare, I looked at it, saw that we were having something coming in, and boom, I'm live. I'm not waiting 12 hours, I'm not waiting 36 or 40, 48 hours, like, oh yeah, eventually it's gonna come. No, like, this is, you know, breaking news information. I am on it, that is my duty and my responsibility to each and every one of you to try to interpret it as best I can in real time and I will provide updates all along the way. So if you'd like to support that, then you can like that video, smash that like button. You can uh, support the channel just by simply subscribing. We do have a live data feed so you can stay up to date in between uh, with information. So you go to earthevolution.com slash energy dash analytics. That is in the video description. Shuma resonances, global seismic levels, radiation belts, aurora forecasts, views of the sun, and more and check out this actually before we sign off we have a very big sunspot exactly earth center direct this was 4199 that is the culprit of this solar flare but 4197 there is the big daddy i think we have a big sunspot for the next two three months as a result of that because it looks like it's just going to continue growing or just doing things i don't think it's going to disappear in the next two days or two weeks even. I think it'll probably make another rotation, but we'll have to wait and see. I guess the one other thing I could update you on 
is that we do have our favorite coronal hole rotating into view. This is uh, the 13th rotation of this coronal hole. We have it coming in right here. Let's check this out because this will be impacting us in about 10 days. So it's worth getting a heads up on this. After this solar storm impact, we have another round of this, the 13th one. So check that out. Nonstop boom shakalakas. Uh, and the poll right now is at 36% all and 35% space boobies. So uh, <laughs> looks like all boobies are winning with this, uh, with this crowd here on the late night show. Uh, here's our coronal hole. It's much bigger than this. It's just starting to show itself. So keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, on this earth evolution, uh, portal here. We also have a store. This is the best way you can support my work is by going to earthevolution.com store, picking up some of the all organic tea or coffee, the boom shakalaka t-shirts like I'm wearing right here and various other products as you can see. So give that a look. We, I offer these products. They are made by me, except for like some of the third party stuff, but the herbal teas and coffees made by my father and I, they are all organic, the best stuff, loose leaf, four ounces, a fantastic value. This is a dream tea. This is a great creative neuroplastic coffee tea blend. It's half calf. And these are just, they're, they're so good. They're, they are like, you can't find this in store. You have some of this and you just feel invigorated from the inside out. Really good stuff. So that's all available at the website, earthevolution.com slash source. One way you can support me, just wanted to make that known because some people really like to show their support. Uh, and just in general by watching this, you've been doing that. So thank you all so much. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. The energies are very, very strong right now. So don't go like get ahead of yourself. It's good to be ambitious, but first listen to your body. Don't let your brain just run everything. Your body has its needs. Your brain has its needs. And it's best to live in spirit so then they can do their own things on their own and all come together so you can stay healthy, well, and to continue self-actualizing and who you are, what you're doing, your sole purpose, life mission, and in reaching higher states of consciousness. So that is what all this is also supportive of. So yes, again, of course, wishing you well. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you all very soon.